let's try to get our brains back in the right spot from this morning. Lots has happened between then and now. Uh, I rewrote up what we started with this morning. Do you remember? This is the very first one we had a look at. Um, if you don't remember because you're in a slightly comatose state, that's all right. That's why I'm reviewing it. We decided that we would prove this. Do you remember what we did? We took this guy here. This is the K plus, K plus one statement, okay? What did we do to this and then start working on? Do you remember? You, you did a subtraction, right? Why did I subtract? The thing I subtracted was this. Why did I subtract that from both sides? What was the point? Yeah, if I can get the right hand side to be zero, this is much easier to work with. I'm like, oh, just prove that a thing is positive. And you know, it still work, but at least I've got like machinery in my brain that can handle that, right? Girls, hurry up, please. Now, that was just one of the methods. Do you remember, I, and I asked you to write it down, so hopefully you have it there in your piece of paper. I suggested there was also another technique that you can use, which doesn't involve starting here, it involves starting somewhere else. Have you got it there in your paper? What does it say? Begin from the assumption. Begin from the assumption. That's this guy here, okay? So, as Jacob so enthusiastically read out, we're going to begin right away by just writing down 2 to the k, is greater than k squared. 2 to the k is greater than k squared. We're going to say this is by assumption. And now, this is what we're going to work on. Okay. Now, the reason why I showed you the other method before is because I think it's slightly easier. You'll probably get to the end of this and think, huh, why do we have this extra method? I will explain that, but let's think about what we can do with this. Okay. Here's my starting point. Where I want to end, my final line should be this. That's where I'm trying to head. Okay? So can someone suggest to me, what might be the easiest thing I can do to start myself on the road to get from this to make it look something like that? Any suggestions? What do you reckon, Daniel? Multiplying both sides by two. Multiplying both sides by two would be a great idea because from our index laws, right, we know that multiplying this by two puts that k plus one up the top. That's good. And then we've got the left-hand side sort of done, and I can forget about it. That's really nice. Can we go ahead and do that, right? I'm going to multiply the left-hand side by 2. So I'm also going to multiply the right-hand side by 2. Okay. Now, you've got 2k squared there. And have a look. As with all induction proofs, not just inequalities, you should always have one eye on your working and then one eye on your destination. Where are you headed? Where are you trying to get to? This is where you're trying to get to. Okay. Have a look at it. How many k squareds will be in there once I expand it out? How many? Just the one, right? And I've got like a spare here, right? So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to break this apart into, well, here's the one that I want. And then I've got like some extra stuff, right? Now, I don't want this actually to be k squared. I want it to factorize and look like this. So now I'm going to think about this guy. And I'm going to think about it just like I did before in light of the fact that k is not just any number. It has to be a number bigger than 4. So far, so good. So let's write this. If k is bigger than 4, what can I say about it in relation to k squared? Have a think. What could I do to this to make it look more like that? I could square it. I could square both sides. That would be fine. Something that might be more helpful, and you'll see why hopefully in a minute, is instead of just squaring both sides, I'm going to multiply both sides by k. Right, so if I do that, k squared is bigger than 4k. By the way, why can't I multiply by k? We've seen before, you can't do everything to inequalities you do with equations, but this is fine. Why can I multiply by k and everything's all right? Thank you. K is, k is positive. It's, it's an integer, but it's got to be bigger than zero, right? So it doesn't break my inequality here, right? And let's use that trick that we did before. Do you remember? As we go further down, because the left-hand side, this guy, is bigger than this, I can keep on making the right-hand side smaller and smaller and smaller, and everything is still OK. Yeah? So if k squared is bigger than 4k, I'm going to swap that k squared for something smaller. OK? Are you following the logic so far? This is my, like my 100, and this is my 40, 50, 99. That's what I was doing, right? They're all the same. So I've got something bigger, something smaller. The inequality is still all right. This is closer. To this, how many k's will there be in this thing once it's expanded? Two of them, right? I'm going to need this side of the board. You want two of them. I better write the left-hand side so it's not just hanging out in the middle. You want two k's, but I've got four of them, actually. So I'm going to say, well, here's the two that I want, and then I've got a couple spare, right? 
Can you see where I'm going here? I'm going to use that spare bit at the end and refer back to what I said before. K is not just any number, it's bigger than four. K is bigger than four. So if that's bigger than four, what can I say about 2K? Think about what I can do. It's gonna be bigger than eight, right? I'm just multiplying both sides by two, yes? So I'm gonna keep on going. I'm substituting bits and pieces and making it smaller and smaller and everything is still preserved. K squared plus 2K plus eight. That thing's a little bit smaller, right? Do you see where I'm going? I'm almost there, right? What do I actually want at the end? I want a one, don't I? Well, I, I have a one, it's just hiding inside the eight. I say, oh, I've got the 2K and I've got the one and then I have some spare stuff. Right? But that's fine. Because there are inequalities, I can just kind of discard the things that I don't need. See, this is k plus 1 all squared. That's the factorization, right? If you're bigger than that, I'm going to substitute that 7 for something smaller, namely 0. And I can say, bam, I am there. Okay? Now, if you have a look at the lines, like if you actually counted the lines, this might be slightly longer than our previous method. Um, this might be more confusing to you. You're like, wow, I have to do this thing over and over again. There's more changing of the inequality, which you might feel uncomfortable with, but it's another tool in your toolbox, right? It's why I put this picture up here. The whole point of giving you two methods is that what a mathematician does is say, well, just because the first method that I try isn't working, what makes you a mathematician is you just try something else. And if that doesn't work, you just try another thing. You don't just walk away and give up, okay?